Today we're going to look at how we can create a web app and a mobile app starting with an existing 4D application. In order to do this, we're going to use 4D v14 and 4D mobile. So let's open up an existing application with 4D v14. The first step, if you haven't already done it, is to add the primary keys. This has been suggested for some time now, and it's indispensable for use with Wakanda. When 4D launches, you have an assistant that can help you create it. Today, we'll see how to use this tool, but naturally you can do this by hand, depending on you and your database. Here, the assistant will give us the option to either use existing IDs. For customer, it has chosen company. Here we'll rectify that we already have a customer ID that is more adapted. For invoice, no problem. The invoice ID appears. For lines, the assistant hasn't found anything. This is normal as it was an intermediary table end to end. No primary key was created because we won't need it to create the table. So we'll add one, select create a new file, and we'll keep the default option to create a UUID. For product, product ID works perfectly. We're finished, so we'll click on apply. It tells us that it will be created, and it looks correct, so we'll click on apply. There, now we're done. We now have the primary keys for each of our tables, and we're now compatible with Wakanda. The second step is to have relations named correctly between our tables. All of the relations that we have between the databases should have an intuitive name in order to easily connect the relations in Wakanda. Naturally, you can keep the default names, but because you're going to manipulate the data with Wakanda's object language, proper naming will be extremely helpful. Here we'll adapt them. For example, the link between invoices and customers is a many-to-one relation from invoice, which I'll name customer. For the returning relation, we'll simply call it invoices. We'll repeat the process for other tables. Each line in bills has a link to invoice, and each invoice has several lines. Same for the last relation. We'll now expose this via REST in order to access it in Wakanda. To do so, we'll go into design mode and then into database settings. We go to the web menu as 4D Mobile works via the web server, and there we see a REST tab. All we have to do is click on the Activate Wakanda REST Service option. Of course, we need to activate the web server to have access to our data, so we'll go over to the Run menu option, followed by Start Web Server. And now everything is ready to go for Wakanda we'll be able to access our tables and create our interface. You can download Wakanda on 4D's product download page. Under the 4D mobile section, you'll find the various distributions of Wakanda. So now we're going to launch Wakanda Enterprise Studio. Here we can create a new solution. Let's name it Invoices 4D. We'll use the default creation operations, which is to say we'll create a new project inside our solution, and we'll also keep a Git depot to manage our versioning. Okay, Wakanda is going to create the solution and the project. To import our databases, we'll use the Import Assistant in the File menu, then Connect to Remote Data Store. Here we can change the name we give our remote database, such as Invoices 4D, for example. And we'll keep localhost as the IP for our server, because we'll use the local server during development. Then save. Wakanda has recognized the tables, which now appear in our project. If we open Invoices 4D, we see the list of our 4D tables here. We'll open them, and they're all there. By default, Wakanda only displays the relations of the selected table. We can, however, choose to see all of the relations.
Here are some table properties, which in Wakanda speak, we call data class attributes. You'll notice that Wakanda has created new attributes corresponding to the relations that we just renamed, invoices and customers. We thus have an invoice object in the customer table and a customer object in the invoice table, which will later allow us to address the relations. Save the modified files. We'll now launch Wakanda Server. We just click on the Start Solution button. And we'll click on the Data Browser. The Data Browser is a tool that lets us visualize the data. We can now see the four tables with their data, customers, invoices, lines, and products. All of their 4D data is now present, as well as their relations. We'll come back to Wakanda, where we can now create our own interface. To do so, we'll go to the main page, where we'll add some widgets. We'll start with a grid and adjust its size. Now we need to add a data source. A data source is a proxy for a table on the object model. Data classes correspond to tables in 4D parlance. They're available here under Model. So we'll take the customer class from the data store and drop it onto the grid. Notice that a data source has been created. Save the page. Now, if we run, we'll see a page open in the browser with the 4D data that has just been made available. We go back into Wakanda, where we'll now display our client invoices. This one is related to a client, so instead of just going to query the invoice table, we'll search for the navigation attribute that we just generated. So in data sources, under customer, we find the invoices attribute, which corresponds to our relation in the 4D structure which will automatically retrieve the invoices related to this customer. Now let's customize this grid a little bit. On the lower right, let's see which fields to display. For example, we can hide the return relation to company. Back in the browser, we'll refresh. We see our two grids, totally functional, and we can view each client's invoices. Let's go back into Wakanda and further enrich the interface. We'll take a third grid and we'll now display the details of our invoices. We should drag and drop a data source. In the invoices data source, we'll look for the line attribute, which we'll drop onto our grid. Remember that the line attribute is actually a relation in 4D. We'll remove the ID of the invoices relations and of the line, which we don't need. We'll modify the product ID to directly use the product name. So we'll rename the label, and for its attribute, we want the name of the product, thus product is the name of our table. And to access its name property, we add a dot. This is object notation, and autocomplete will propose the properties from the product table. All we have to do is select name. In Wakanda speak, we say that name is the attribute of the product data class. And there we have it. When we drop our attributes onto the grids, the linked data sources are automatically generated. We can also explicitly create them manually. If we click on the little plus symbol in the linked data sources section, we can select a data source line and then its product attribute. We have a new data source that's been created. We'll now add a preview of product details. This time, instead of adding a widget, then connecting a table or a data source, we'll directly drag and drop a data source. We'll take the product data source, drag and drop, and now we can directly configure our widget. Let's select the form. We'll customize the columns and delete the link to the invoice. Then we'll click Create. And now we have an area that displays the detail of the current view. We have nothing more to do than to rearrange the widgets.
Back in the browser, we now have a completely functional web app. We can browse through clients, display their invoices, and get details on them. This app works very well as a classic web app to browse from a desktop or laptop, or even a tablet. For smartphones, on the other hand, we can't really, for example, display all the information on a single page due to the screen size. A smartphone requires another type of navigation. So we'll create an application specific to smartphones with widgets and navigation that are adapted. When we put the application online, we should be able to switch automatically between mobile and desktop in this interface. To do this, we'll go to the upper right and in the drop down menu select Smartphone. And here we'll see that specific new smartphone widgets have appeared. We use a widget that's rather familiar to smartphone users, the navigation view. It's a navigation panel. Drop it onto the smartphone and name this view Customers. Then we'll create the contents of this page. First, we'll drop a list view widget. For this widget to occupy all the space available, in the style tab, we connect anchors on each side and align it with the edges, placing a zero in each field. We'll drop customers onto our list view. By default, the widget will display two types of data, company, hence the name of the company, and the address. We'll modify the behavior, and instead of displaying the address, we'll just have the city, for example. Perfect. We'll now configure the little button that will allow us to access the next view. We select, and then we go to the event tab. Here we can choose the behavior of the button. As it happens, here we want to roll out the display of the next view on a click event, so we choose on click. Now we're going to do a bit of JavaScript. It's not very complicated, and it's a piece of code that we're going to reuse for all of the views. We'll start with a command with WAF, W-A-F, in uppercase. WAF is a key term meaning Wakanda Application Framework. So WAF dot here I specify I want to access a widget, widgets in plural, then dot navigation view one, which is the name of the widget, and we'll tell it we want to launch the opening of the next page, thus dot go to next view with a parentheses because it's a function. Note the uppercase and lowercase as JavaScript is case sensitive. Here's your line of JavaScript. It's not too complicated, and we'll see that we can do the same thing for the other pages. We'll now create the next page. Go back to the Index Smartphone tab and select the Navigation view, and we'll be in the Properties. We create an invoice view by clicking on the little plus and adding the name Invoices. Now we'll add a list view, we'll anchor it to fill the entire screen, margins at zero, and drag and drop the invoices from the customer's data source. We want to customize the fields displayed, so we'll keep the invoice ID, but we'll change the second field and put the total of the invoice here. So in the sources field, we'll specify invoices.vat total. And for the third field, we'll keep the default values. We'll now create the navigation link in the same way that we just did between the first and second view. Select the events button, choose on click, and use the same code. 
just copy and paste. We'll repeat the operation for a third view. Upon this detail view, we'll add a list view. And we'll add the invoice lines, so when we deploy the invoice, we get the line attribute that will drop into the view. For the first field, we'll directly look for the product name, thus line zero dot product dot name. The second will have the price, so it'll be line zero dot product dot price. For the last field, Wakanda has chosen quantity by default. We'll now create a new navigation link. Select the button, go to events, on click, and we do our copy and paste. For the final view, we'll directly drop the product data source and use auto-generation mode. We'll remove the invoice line, or the return link, so to speak. Click on Create, and we replace the form in the center of the view. There, we've created four views. we finished our mobile interface. To view it now, we can do it directly from the browser. So run file and we'll look at it in the browser. Obviously in the browser, this style of navigation isn't quite perfect. However, if you're using Chrome, you can emulate a phone. There's certainly other emulation choices as well, but you have no trouble finding them on the web. For now, we'll open the Chrome debugger with a right click, inspect element, and click on the little show drawer button in the upper part of the debugger to the right and finally, the emulation button, where we'll choose to mock up an iPhone 5 and click on Emulate. There, we can now test our mobile app as if it were on a smartphone. The application is totally functional with four levels of navigation.